Imagine a world millions of years after evolution. This is a new chapter within the story of the dinosaurs. Our modern world is home to an ecosystem of different creatures. Now their future is prehistoric. This is the one of the harshest ecosystems on Earth, the deserts of South Africa. A lot of animals lived in Africa including some exotic species of dinosaurs. This is one of the iconic dinosaur species in Jurassic Park, called Dilophosaurus. The accurate Dilophosaurus has a size quite taller than a human, has a notch in the upper jaw, with its arms at the side, with a pair of large crests made of keratin. The Jurassic Park's Dilophosaurus has a small size, a different shaped skull and crests, with its arms more pronated with a pair of large frills that can help it to spitting poisonous venom making it one of the dangerous dinosaurs of Jurassic Park franchise. Most of the different areas in Namibia is deserts. Most of the large areas where animals go at in the dry season is covered by salt flats. So what we are actually going to talk about in this episode are the environments around the world. Africa, for example, is going to be the challenging ecosystems when it comes to basic survival skills in nature. A great example is that in Egypt, camels can survive without water up to 15 days is because they can store fat in their humps and can use this to help them go longer. Without water is their ability to the key of desert survival. In the next morning, a pair of male Dilophosaurus is impressing a female because it is the mating season in the dry season. And another thing about Dilophosaurus when it comes to mating. A great example is look at the sexual dimorphism between males and females. For example, for the male Dilophosaurus you have brightly colors and bigger crests on their heads and different types of body colors in the male as well and as for the females they are more of a darker duller color with smaller crests on its head with different darker colors between the different ones and that's ha and that actually is a great example towards modern birds like ducks or geese or any specific creature on the planet.
Once the female is interested in the male's bright colors, the male joins her to a courtship chase. This is basically like a mating dance. Instead of just dancing, it also is running to complete the challenge to mate the female. Now, the male starting mating by humping her on her back, and there is a common answer. Once the mating is finished by the male, the female runs to a different place to lay her eggs. The mating progress is done the female will find a different male Dilophosaurus to mate with once her young is nearly grown up. When it comes to the actual progress of mating is that the male gets on top of the female and they use this sort of action in modern crocodiles so the male has to like get its penis into the cloaca the single opening of what the females have and that is to try and get enough sperm so then it could create the eggs inside of its organs and then the female like goes into a different direction and looks for different places to lay an egg and that is how dinosaurs could have made it <laughs> so I will put a warning on it in the video so don't forget to subscribe this is how crocodiles are at their own mating places this is how dinosaurs are mating it's basically the same thing to crocodiles but in servile different ways of reproduction. Dinosaurs can mate by dancing with the female. Dinosaurs fight for females. Dinosaurs can basically can choose the right male to mate with. When it comes to the right environment to raise their young, what will happen if a dinosaur or a bird lays eggs in a salt flat? In this challenging ecosystem, the salt flats can be very dangerous. If a dinosaur decided to make a simple nest as with the salt, the salt can easily evaporate the water from the eggs and then instantly kills them. So it has to find different types of territory in order to lay eggs in a safer place. After so many weeks, the female Dilophosaurus eggs are under her protection in the grasslands of South Africa. Whenever comes new places, comes different places, comes different animals with new predators. Like the long-crested herbivore, Parasaurolophus walkeri. including the giraffes of the Jurassic period, Brachiosaurus, In Africa, it is home to a giant sailed backed carnivore. This is that carnivore called Spinosaurus aegyptiacus. This is the original version of Spinosaurus. It had a fish-like tail, a different shaped sail and skull with a small crest, with small legs and long arms could be used for swimming underwater.
At night, animals in Africa can busy through the night. With dinosaurs, it's the same thing expect one interesting dinosaur. Like this one. This is the South American dinosaur called Carnotaurus. He is after his favorite meal, a herd of Parasaurolophus. But what makes these interesting creatures different? How did an animal like this have a long crest used for? I bet you should be thinking of the same thing as well. Parasaurolophus has a long crest on top of its head. What's interesting is that the males has a longer crest than the females. We know that the male parasaurs use their crests to attract a female by the chambers inside of the crest, which makes sounds far away to the female. Carnotaurus is much different from other predators. It has pair of horns meaning meat-eating bull, and it has really small arms. Its arms could been used to attract a female Carnotaurus, which has a duller colors on its body, and the males had been brightly colored, including its small arms. Research suggests that Carnotaurus could wave its arms around and around at an angle of 70 degrees. And that proves that dinosaurs like Carnotaurus can be different to any other creature on the planet. The next morning, the herd is looking for food and water. The Carnotaurus is on the hunt for large prey. In order to hunt without any cover, it needs to not get seen by other animals and to stalk quietly. Nearby, the Dilophosaurus is hunting the Carnotaurus hunting skills. The Carno gets his prize, but for some predatory dinosaurs, some of their hunts can end in failure. And he's so lucky for his meal, where if he hasn't catch this prey, it can kill him for starvation. This term is going to the worst, as a young adult Parasaurolophus is lost, and ends at the salt flats. The Dilophosaurus is running away from a large predatory dinosaur, and that is the Spinosaurus. He was looking for food on land, but how can we know what this dinosaur can eat? And another thing in on dinosaurs is on the Spinosaurus. The Jurassic Park version looks completely different, but what's unique? about the Spinosaurus is that the tip of its skull it has small holes holes similar to those of modern day crocodiles which has the similar features the Spinosaurus is almost like a giant crocodile by its skull and act like a crocodile in water but what can it eat in water? 
And another thing is that they can use their skulls as motion sensors when they're on underwater if they were on their regular prey like giant sorceress called Ongapristus and that's a great way to hunt different species underwater than well as on land. However, if it's the dry season then all the rivers can like easily dry up and they evaporate to the ground and I had to hunt bigger prey, prey like an oral like a water titan or any other specific dinosaur species that Spinosaurus can hunt but has an African rival called Carcoa Dontosaurus. The salt flats isn't a good place for animals to live, but some creatures can survive the deserts and other creatures lived in different biomes of the world. Near to the salt flats, a herd of Gallimimus is on the run because their herd is being hunted by the mother Dilophosaurus. The mother Dilophosaur babies are hatched out of their eggs and growing up. The mother feeds her young with the dead Gallimimus. How can Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park can spit venom? And you're probably wondering, why does the Jurassic World's Dilophosaurus needs a huge thrill? Take modern animals, for example, you have the thrill lizard it's from Australia and they have this huge thrill with flappy skin with some bones on the frill that helps it to stick up and Dilophosaurus has poisonous venoms similar to those of King Cobras in India when they can spit out venoms from their teeth and then aims it at the victims probably like a Spinosaurus but on the face and that can tell that creatures like the Jurassic World's Earls Dinosaurs could use Fedem in the first place. After 48 hours in the salt flats, the young Parasaurolophus has died due to starvation and dehydration. In this episode, we learned a lot of interesting facts about the dinosaurs, the ecosystems of South Africa, and so much more. But there are problems with the planet's modern wildlife. They are at the risk of extinction in Africa. Like the rhinos for example who are being hunted by poachers for their keratin horns. The African elephant is also hunted by poachers for their ivory tusks. And the giraffes, zebras, lions, and so much. Our world is changing due to climate change. And the world is taking this in action by helping and saving the future of our modern wildlife and our planet. In Jurassic World 3, dinosaurs are being sold to illegal black markets to sell dinosaurs for their pelts, for handbags, their eggs, for food, and for fighting. And that is basically what the modern world is struggling. Animal trafficking is the wrong thing to do with poor animals, and it is illegal involving a big amount of money. It's worth around $23 billion a year for the resukers of this amazing creatures. So we can make a difference with the natural world. WWF is helping animals from being extinct. Just like what has happened to the dinosaurs. We can help our planet by respecting nature. Every living thing on this planet can live in different groups. From fishes in our oceans. 
From mammals like bears, to birds like the penguins, we can save everything the light touches. Be Cause we are all connected. In the great circle of life. If you want help the natural world on our planet, go to World War Wildfi and will help to protect animals from extinction.